Good afternoon, folks. It is good to be back with you. Uh, Royster right here with the National Flood Insurance Program here at FEMA with my buddy Aaron uh, to talk with you about the next phase. So we've talked about some of the consumer problems. We've talked about how to file a claim. Today, I want to talk about getting the wet stuff out. When you can safely return to your home, you're going to begin mucking out and you've got to get the wet stuff out. Many of you, it's this weekend you're able to make that re-entry. For some, that's still a few days away. But for those who are able to get there, I wanna talk about how you do that, how you get the wet stuff out. So first, you must wear personal protective gear, a respirator mask, goggles, protective gloves on your hands. If you're using a portable generator, be really careful, make sure that it is far outside the house and away from the home so that we're not dealing with carbon monoxide. So there's a link in the description for this video as we're broadcasting right now to epa.gov slash mold. epa.gov slash mold. You're gonna wanna take that link when we wrap up this video. If you're insured, if you have flood insurance, I have some specific instructions for you. Adjusters are going to know, need to know exactly what you've lost. Take lots of photos. I know I keep saying this, but I can't overstate it enough. Grab your phone, grab the phone of a friend, and start taking photos more than you think. So you need close-ups. I need a close-up on the brand name. I need to see the model number a serial number. Take those photos before you drag the belongings out. A careful piece of advice for you, get swatches. So if you've got furniture, carpets, wallpaper, curtains, th those pieces of value, we're going to need a swatch of that material. So take it, cut it out, and keep it for your adjuster. Because properly documenting damaged property is the very basis of your flood claim. And it's how we're going to be able to make that payment to you. Make sure you discuss your policy requirements with your insurance agent and your adjuster. Now, some of you watching now, you may have already removed the damage items. So here's some advice for you. If you can still get to the debris pile, get those photos. If you can't, Start thinking about friends or family and ask them to look through their photo streams. When they were visiting in recent months, they might have a picture that includes that item. That's going to be good for us too. That will work just as well. Let's talk about sheetrock. You can cut the damaged portion of the drywall out and you can haul it away to the debris pile. Again, that's going to be so important to the drying process in your home. Again, we need photos. It's best if you can leave one piece of that drywall all the way to the floor so that when the adjuster comes, he or she can see exactly where that flood line is in your home. So one more link. You'll see it in the description box. that will take you to NFIP's fact sheet on guidelines for flood policy holders when you need to clean up. That's it. FEMA.gov slash hurricane dash Harvey. Just go to FEMA.gov. You'll be an easy link that is there and you'll be able to find that fact sheet, those guides for you as you begin to clean up. Finally, I want you to remember that flood damaged belongings are dangerous. They're great tips from the Environmental Protection Agency on how to handle your cleanup. You really need to ensure the mold cleanup is complete before you reoccupy your home. We want to make sure that you and your family are safe. So check out both links in that Facebook description, epa.gov slash mold, take, go to fema.gov, go to Harvey, you'll be able to see those guidelines on how to clean up. Get the wet stuff out, friends. Get it out. Let's get your home dried out. Remember, as you begin this long road towards recovery, stay safe. Keep your family safe.